All right, so in this video, I'm going to share you a study tool that I learned from a top learning scientist, and it's called free recall. This method literally takes like 10 to 15, maybe 20 minutes to implement in your study routine. And once I actually tried it and implemented it into my own personal studying routine, I actually found that I was able to remember a lot more new information in less time. Free recall is simply a method that allows you to self-test after you learn a given topic. And this is really powerful because it can actually help you to remember so much more information in less time. It's not easy, but it's something that you could use to add to your learning toolbox so that you can create a functional learning system that actually works. For those who don't know me, my name is Matthew. I graduated high school with three A stars and one A in my A-levels. I'm currently studying financial technology with a minor in computer science at the University of Hong Kong. All right, so I'm not gonna waste your time. I'm just gonna jump straight into the method. So how do you actually use this method? Free recall. If you've been on the study YouTuber space for a while and you've watched a couple other study videos, you've probably heard of this method. Uh, it's called blurting. Blurting is basically the same thing, but it's not actually the same thing. So blurting is simply after you read a given topic, after you read the lecture notes or the textbook, you close the textbook and you try to remember every single thing that you read and write it down on a piece of paper. That's what blurting is. And that's how it's actually been taught in the study YouTuber space. But blurting and free recall are actually not the same thing. Free recall is a better version of blurting. So free recall is not simply trying to get every single piece of information that you learned from the lecture onto your piece of notes. It's more like you're trying to understand what you actually read and trying to get the big picture understanding of, you know, what the heck did you actually just read just now? So it looks something like this. Instead of trying to recall every single word that is on the lecture slides, try to understand the main key concepts that the lecture notes actually went through. So for example, I'll give you an example. I was recently doing a free recall for chapter, uh, chapter eight, options, contracts, and you know, option strategies. So it basically went through all of like the option trading strategies that uh, traders use. So for example, straddle, strangle, um, bear spread, bull spread, all, all those kinds of things, right? So after reading that from my lecture notes, I opened my tablet and then I actually just made a free recall diagram, just outlining all of the strategies that I kind of remember. So I basically drew diagrams for every single thing that I remember. There were actually some strategies that I actually forgot to write down. For example, one of the ones that I forgot was a color, the color strategy. So the color trading strategy, from what I recall, looks something like this. Uh, you long an option that has a lower strike price, and then you, you short a call option that Ha that has a, a higher strike price. So lower strike price, higher strike price, and you basically kind of get this payoff diagram. So why does that even matter? Why does that relate to you? It's because the simple act of remembering, actually writing this diagram out on a piece of paper will actually help you reinforce that information into your brain. The act of retrieving that information, given that you don't have anything in front of you, is how you actually learn. So testing equals learning. So I'll give you another analogy. Imagine you're going to the gym and you pick up like a one kilogram dumbbell and you lift that for, you know, 80 times. Are you going to build muscle with this one kilogram dumbbell? Probably not, right? It doesn't make any sense. You like, this is literally gonna like, it, this is nothing. So it's the same logic with studying. When you are learning, if it's not feeling very effortful, if it's not feeling very difficult, if you're not feeling like you're actually using your brain, then you're doing it completely wrong. That's not learning. That's, that is learning actually. It is called passive learning. It's not active learning because active learning is what you actually want. Active learning is kind of like going into the gym and then doing, you know, 80 kilogram deadlifts for like five reps. That's what active learning is like. It's not going to be easy. It's not supposed to be. But your brain is designed to work like a muscle. So the more you actually retrieve that information, the more weight you actually lift in the gym, the more you're going to actually build those gains and those muscles and those 
cognitive processes that actually help you to remember more information more effectively. So I'll actually just screen record my iPad so that you can get a bigger view of how this actually works. So here I did a free recall on chapter seven, which is one of the things that I mentioned earlier. And I was basically drawing all these options payoff diagrams that I remember from the lecture notes. So I remember before this, uh, 30 minutes ago, I was reading the lecture notes and I was actually trying to understand and make sense of these different trading strategies. I was not taking any notes, actually. I was just, you know, reading the thing and trying to understand it. And I think that's something that um, if you're just simply taking notes on the stuff that you're learning without actually thinking about the information, you're not actually learning because learning happens in the brain. It doesn't happen in a piece of paper. So back to the free recall. This is how I actually did it. So, yeah, I kind of remember like, OK, there were two types of options. There was a call and a put option. There's also a short option and the long one for each. Then I remember all of these payoff diagrams and all of these other trading strategies. You'll notice that um, I actually wrote a question mark here because I didn't actually understand how you do this strategy. And this actually is actually completely wrong if you saw the diagram from earlier. And one cool thing that I want you to note is that um, what I do is I write questions when I don't understand something. So when I was reading the lecture notes and when I was actually doing this free recall diagram, actually was trying to make sense of the information inside my head. But there were some things that still didn't actually make sense. For example, why is the European premium and the American premium identical for non dividend paying stocks? This question I didn't actually understand. And I remember after writing it down after class, I went to my professor and um, I, I was doing I did this free recall before I went to class. So so I, I came to class kind of late. <laughs> I just wanted to ask the professor some questions and I asked him. I asked him this question right here. And he told me that my understanding was completely off because this question that I had was actually wrong. It's not European payoff, it's European premium. And once he explained that to me, I was like, oh, OK, I actually understand this now. You know, that's actually the beauty of writing down questions, because when you're writing down questions, your your brain is doing something called the generation effect. Actually, let me just write this down real quick. The generation effect basically states that it is easier for you to remember something if you actually created it. For example, you're more likely to remember something if you asked a question about it. So if you ask your professor a question and he explain it to you, that will actually make it so that it's much easier for your brain to remember the information. So the simple act of you know writing questions actually helps your brain remember more information. Plus, when you're writing more questions, you're filling in your knowledge gaps. You never remember that that time where you read something and you try to do a past paper on it and then you just couldn't actually solve the question. It's because you had a knowledge gap. If you didn't have a knowledge gap, you would be able to solve the past paper problem easily. But the thing is, most of us have knowledge gaps and gaps of knowledge in our learning. Like this is completely normal. I have them. You have them. The top students have them. But the top students actually are able to fill these knowledge gaps. And by asking questions, you're actually able to understand the material at a greater depth. And so when they actually sit the exam, they're sitting down and they can actually apply the information they learned to solve the question. It's because their knowledge gap, their, their knowledge, the big picture understanding of the topic is pretty high. And this is the reason why when you're actually solving past paper questions, when you're applying the information you learn to a different context, that is a form of generation effect. And that's why your brain is actually able to remember the information so much more effectively. All right, so back to free recall. When do you use free recall? Well, this learning scientist called Benjamin Keep actually went through a couple of different times that you can do it. So, for example, one of them was you study when you study, like you read the information for like, you know, 20, 20 minutes. And then you do a free recall for maybe 10 to 15 minutes, something like that. Like he went through something, something like this. But of course, this is like not fixed. You can definitely modify it to suit your own needs. But personally, what I do is after I read the lecture notes and tr and like read it after I actually fully 
at least claim to fully understand the topic, I would close my lecture notes, close my tabs, and then I would basically just recall, try to recall this information. So I don't know how long it takes for me. I never really measured it. I don't measure my studying time. But after reading the lecture notes, I would immediately go through free recall. And this testing effect helps me to consolidate this information inside my brain. Another way that I do it is after spacing it out for one day. So for example, I learned chapter five today. The next day, when I am sitting down at my desk again, instead of rereading chapter five, I would do free recall on chapter five and then read the textbook. And this is actually really helpful because there's something called the forgetting curve. And the forgetting curve is something that all humans have. This is every single human being experiences something called the forgetting curve. This, this is the information that you remember, and this is time. The first time you learn something, it's very hard to remember the information if you didn't encode it very properly. Like if you didn't encode the information properly, after maybe like one day, you're probably gonna forget like all of it. The thing is, this is actually not a bad thing because this is like, this thing is a biological mechanism. Your brain is designed to forget a lot of information very fast because if the information is not actually important your brain doesn't want to remember the information and use its mental resources to actually store this into long-term memory but long-term memory i'm going to talk about that in just a second so but every single time you test yourself you actually flatten the forgetting curve and so every single time you do free recall right you're actually able to remember more like 100 percent of the information maybe 80 percent 70 percent realistically and then you're gonna this is just gonna keep going down like this. Now, is free recall the best way <clears throat> to test yourself? I don't think so. It depends on the subject, really. If you're learning something like math, free recall might help you remember the formulas, but you're still gonna have to solve more math problems. Like the same for computer science, right? If you're taking computer science like I am, you're probably not gonna be doing free recall as your main study method. So again, this is just simply a tool to help you remember information, to self-test yourself. Past papers and actually, you know, solving problems is probably still going to be the best way to learn and actually remember something long term. Pre-recall is simply a tool that can help you remember the stuff that you read, but actually applying that stuff is a whole different thing. And you need to be doing more questions and more retrieval practice because the more you do this, the more you're going to flatten the forgetting curve. Once the forgetting curve is so flat like this, you've basically put it into long-term memory. I really do think that the more past papers you do, the more problems, the more practice problems you solve, the better you're gonna do on the exam. Because free recall is not something that's going to be tested on in the exam, right? It's just to help you gain the big picture understanding of what you actually learned. But actually being able to do well in an exam requires you to be practicing like how you would play for a basketball game for example if you practice like you play you play like you practice so if you do past papers as you're studying you're going to go into the exam and think to yourself okay this is just another past paper this is just another past paper and what ends up happening your anxiety lowers your stress lowers your confidence increases and this is how the top students are consistently able to score high mark because they've practice using practice questions practice problems past papers and they've done that enough times so that when they sit the exam it's just second nature to them that's what the top students do every single top student that i've talked to studies like this by the way if you're enjoying this type of content and you want to get more personalized help from me you can check the first link down below in the description it's my community a star students we have students from all around the world there who are trying to get the best grades that they can. And what we have inside this community are a couple of courses on how to actually study and learn more effectively, a time management and productivity course so that you can avoid feeling burnt out and overwhelmed, and a bunch of other really cool stuff that I have inside. All of this information that I teach inside my YouTube videos are in those courses. And in those courses, I actually go into much more depth than these kind of YouTube videos. So if that sounds interesting to you, you can check out the first link in the description below. In my YouTube script, I have two more things explaining why free recall actually works. So number one reason is because of something called the feedback loop. When you're learning something, it's really important that 
no matter what study method you're doing, it's really important to have a feedback loop. Imagine you're trying to sh learn how to shoot a basketball. And now imagine that you're completely blindfolded. Your ears are blocked. You cannot see or hear if your shot actually goes into the rim or not. And you try to shoot the basketball a hundred times. Chances are you're probably not going to learn anything because you didn't know if you actually made the shot or not. And you, your body does not know if it needs to actually adjust based on that shot that it just made. So it's, it's the same with, with learning. If you don't have a feedback loop, if you don't know what you're doing is right or wrong, then you're not learning anything, right? It's the same, like if I use a sports analogy, it makes total sense. But why is that most people actually, you know, when they study, they're just writing notes passively. They're reading things passively. They're not actually getting any feedback from anything. I don't know why, I don't know why this is the case, but it's just something that some students have. But once you actually understand that you need a feedback loop to um, actually study effectively, your study session will actually become much more enjoyable because you know if you're making progress or not, but also a lot more efficient because you know whether you got this thing down or not. You know if you solve the question, you can check the mark scheme, right? If you're checking the mark scheme, you know whether you did something correctly or incorrect. And the last reason why this method actually works is something called uh, memory interference. When you're learning a given topic, sometimes your brain actually gets confused on what actually makes sense. So when you learn something, it's kind of like cramming a bunch of stuff inside your brain and now your brain actually has to process and synthesize and actually make sense of the knowledge. When you're learning a big topic like integration, for example, you, there's so many ways to actually integrate a function that you're not sure whether to use this method for this scenario or this method for that scenario. Your brain, when it's first exposed to like integration, it doesn't know which one to actually apply to which one. But through free recall, you're using your brain to organize the information, to group it together. So in my example over here, I actually separated my free recall into like different sections. So firstly was payoffs. So what did the payoff diagrams look like for each strategy? And then secondly, was this, it was a strategy itself. How do the strategies actually work? Actually, now I look up at it, it's basically the same thing. I think what I meant by payoffs here was the payoff of a long option and a call option. But these are the payoffs of all the strategies that I remember that you can construct using these uh, options. So by grouping information together, it reduces memory interference because you don't wanna go into an exam and apply the wrong method for this for a given question, right? If you're solving uh, an integration question that requires you to do like integration by substitution, you don't wanna be applying, you know, Le Hopital's rule or something like that. You don't wanna be applying other integration rules like integration by parts, for example. You wanna be able to apply the right thing to the right type of question. And free recall allows you to sort that information inside your head so that you know when to apply this piece of information to this kind of context. And that is actually very, very powerful. So yeah, I hope you found this video useful. And if you want more personalized help from me, you can, again, check the first link down in the description below. But as always, may God guide us on the right path, and I'll see you in the next video.